My mom said this. She was like, I don't give a f She's like, I don't care what you guys f do. She's like, you better take care of him for the rest of his f life. And he leans over me and he's like this close to my face. And he's like, what do you want? And I said, what do you want? Yeah, he said, what do you want? And I said, what? I've always said, you know, my mom's my hero and uh, it's f true. At one point I, I flatlined and uh, I, I did a few times, but they brought my mom in and had her say goodbye to me because they're like, he's not gonna make it. Like he's, he's probably not gonna make it. And um, I mean, I couldn't imagine being in my mom's shoes. My mom, you know, she was like, I'm just, you know, I'm so sorry this happened to you. And, I, and my buddies also have said that to me too. And they don't feel, they don't feel sorry for me. You know, I told them like, you feel sorry for me, I wanna kick your fucking ass. Like, I'm, I don't feel sorry for myself. And- uh, Your mom sounds like a very special woman. Yeah, she she is a fierce woman and I- From know, childhood to now, yeah, I mean. I, I've, I've always said, you know, my mom's my hero and uh, it's fucking true. Um, <clears throat> I, I wouldn't be the man I am today without her and the way that she raised me. And I mean, seeing her go through the struggles that, we, you know, we did as a family um, and how she lost everything and built it back up even better. It, it always proved to me, I was like, well, I'm fucking got through it, so can I. And I always, every time I had a hard moment in my life, I'm like, my mom went through all this shit to give me a good life. Like, I'm gonna be successful. I will be successful. And, uh, I'm very thankful to her for that. Um, yeah, she came in and said goodbye. <clears throat> um, and then uh, the regimental commander, um, he was he was great. My mom, my mom was there, uh, Colonel Graham. And they were like, what do you need? Like to my mom. And she's like, you get his best friend here right now. If you want him to live, get his fucking best friend out here. And so they fucking cut rid of orders. <laughs> um, I got flown to, to Andrews Air Force Base and he was flying, they f flew him out to Walter Reed, um, to DC. And so he met us at Walter Reed, but some, I don't remember this, but another Marine was saying, uh, and the Wounded Warrior Battalion, like the liaison who was there for my mom was saying that, uh, they were trying to life flight me to Walter Reed. And I like woke up and I don't, I don't know if this is true or not, but this, this is what he said. Uh, um, that they were trying to life flight me to Walter Reed and they were, and I like woke up and they were talking to me uh, or they were talking over me about like flying me and talking about putting the other Marines on the bus. And he said that I was like, I want to ride on the bus with these guys <laughs> and like turn, turn down the fucking <laughs> flight. I was like, no, I want to fucking ride on the bus with the Marines going to Walter Reed. And uh, so they, they put us on the fucking bus with them and, and drove us, drove us to Walter Reed. And then, uh, which I feel like would only make sense because I don't know why else I would not be life flighted over with how critical I was. Um, so now I'm a Walter Reed. It's like four or five days post post blast, and uh, it's like August 31st or something like that. Or yeah, and they like wake me up. They pull me off of out of intubation, pull the sedation off me, <clears throat> and. Um, I woke up. And, um, you know, my, my mom's there, my, my buddy Ritter, he's there. And my mom's like, hey, sweetheart, how you doing? And my mom, she knows me really well. Like she, she took photos and videos the whole time from the time she got to Germany to me, she took photos and videos of all of this shit and through fucking tears. And one of the first things I said when I woke up was like, did you fucking take pictures of this or what? And she was like, like, yeah, I took fucking pictures, motherfucker. Like, she knew I would want pictures and videos of, like, my surgeries and stuff. And, and uh, I mean, that's that's a testament to her fucking strength as well. But um, before I jump into this, she, on the way back to, to, to Andrews Air Force Base from Germany, they actually had put her on a plane with all of the refugees. So a few of us who were injured and, like, a hundred and something refugees were on this plane. My mom was saying... Obviously, she grew up, you know, 20s, in, in her 20s uh, when 9-11 happened, and I was like three or four years old, and I remember seeing it on TV, but she talked about, you know, having a lot of biases, a lot of Americans did after that for uh, Middle Easterners, and her first thought when she realized that all these refugees were on the plane, she thought, oh, fuck, is this plane going to blow up? Like, this just happened, like, is this plane going to fucking blow up? 
And then uh, she looked over at some point during the flight and saw this Afghan woman standing and holding like these three onto these three medical beds. And it was three of her kids and uh, who had been one of them had been like in the operating room with me. And she like went over to her and like tried to converse with her. And she like pointed like, are these your kids pretty much? And, and like the lady nodded. And then my mom like pointed over to me and was like, this is my son. And they just like held hands and cried. And uh, she just like let her know that she was there for her and not alone. So that was pretty cool to hear. Um, and she told me, she's like, you know, being on that plane and seeing what happened and seeing all those refugees, she was like, people don't get to see this shit. That was the first time that I realized this is this is why this happened. This is what my my son and all these men and women serving were out there doing. They were rescuing all of these families, all these thousands and thousands of families. This is this is why this happened. Um, like, or this is why this is what they were out there doing. This is what they were there for. And uh, it's pretty cool to hear her talk about that. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm at Walter Reed. <clears throat> And one of the first things I say when I wake up, like first words out of my mouth, I was like coming to and just really fucking high. Obviously, I'm like, fuck me. She's like, what? I'm like, fuck me. And she was like, what's wrong, sweetheart? Like other than the obvious. And I was like, right away, I was like, those motherfuckers blew off my fucking leg. Like said that right away. And she's like, well, no, they, like, they didn't blow off your leg, sweet. I just knew, like I remembered like almost immediately when I woke up, like I had remembered, uh, most of what happened um and I, she said i talked for nine hours straight just like about everything that happened like the fucking the gunfight the fucking bombing the fucking interpreter going down to the gate everything leading up to it and uh you know that i, I was awake for like two days um and on like on or yeah they started bringing in uh generals and like all these fucking people to do fucking photo ops and shit and you know like come meet me and stuff and i'm i don't know any better i'm really fucked up and really high and uh, a few people came in a few generals i don't even remember who honestly um and then they're like you know do you do you want to see the president of the united like, do you want to see the president and i was like I was like what it's like the president <clears throat> like yeah the, yeah the, the president i was like the president of the united states like yeah the president of the united states like it was like the president wants to see me and like yeah he wants to come see you and like thank you and meet you and i was just like what the fuck and i was like my my buddy my buddy ritter he's he's a he's a black republican and uh i'm like yeah i want to fucking meet the president who just want to meet the fucking president and he's like looking at me like what the fuck and uh it kind of makes sense a little later but uh I was like, okay. And so I told him, I was like, hold all of my, hold all, hold all of my uh, opioids, like hold all of my narcotics and stuff. Like I want to be coherent when I, when I meet him. And they're like, no, we can't do that. I'm like, you're going to hold all of my fucking drugs other than my antibiotics. Like I want to be coherent when I meet him. So like, okay. And my mom's like, fucking listen to him. And uh, they held all my, my pain meds. They're like, he's, you know, when, when is he going to be here? And like, he's going to be here in about an hour. Well, one hour goes by, nothing. Two hours goes by, nothing. I'm still, I keep coming in like, do you want, you know, it's time for your meds, you want your meds? I'm like, nope, hold them, hold them, hold them. And uh, like three hours goes by, it's like four hours at this point. And my mom's furious. Like, she's like, what the fuck? Like, where is this guy? And, um, you know, I'm, uh, she finally, she like kind of sits up and I see her get, get a little anxious and she's like, Okay, like like the Secret Service are coming into the floor. Um, he's probably going to be here in a few minutes. And then this uh, average looking white dude with brown hair uh, comes in the room, like presidential seal on his shirt and a, ma and a black mask on with a presidential seal. And I'm just like looking at this dude and he like pats down my mom, pats down my buddy. I'm like looking at this guy and I'm like looking at my mom, my, my buddy. And this dude's just like standing in the corner of the room. <clears throat> I'm like, what the fuck's going on? And he's like over there. And I'm like, mom and she's like sitting to my right I'm like mom mom she's like what, like, what? what? And she's nervous you know and I'm like is that the president and like they all, everyone in the room starts laughing and uh the secret service agent starts laughing and he like pulls on his mask and he's like no he's like but I work for him and I was just like what the what I was like well, this isn't the president I was like 
what do you mean you work for him? And uh, I was like, oh my God, who's the fucking president? And just so much had happened, just had so much trauma on me. I had no idea who the president was. I didn't think it was Trump. I didn't think it was Biden. I just, my brain couldn't make the connection. I couldn't, I, didn't, I had no idea who the president was. And I'm like, holy fuck, like this dude's going to be here in, in here any minute. I have no idea who the president is. And uh, I look over at my mom, I'm like, mom, mom. She's like, what? Like, what? what's up, sweetheart? And I'm like, who's the fucking president? And she's like laughing. And she's like, what? I'm like, who is the fucking president? And she's like, are you serious? I'm like, I have no idea who the president is. And she's like, she's like, sweetheart. It's like, it's, it's Joe Biden. And uh, this is just me talking about what happened, but I just leaned back and I was like, oh my, oh my God. And uh, this, I was like, oh my fucking God. And that's what I said. And the cigarette, Secret Service dude just like beat red, like trying not to laugh. And uh, I was like, fuck. And this dude, like two minutes later, he walks in with him and Jill Biden and their little entourage of people and like a photographer. And uh, right away, like remember him coming up to me, um, trying to shake my hand, like my, try to shake my right hand. And I look at him and I'm like, I don't have an arm. And my left arm is in this big ass cast with this giant orange fucking foam block around it. I completely immobile. All I can do is move my head. My arm's gone. I'm like, I don't have an arm. And he says, oh, and like kind of stands up and then like goes over to reach for my fingers because about an inch of my fingers are showing and just like grabs my fingers. Doesn't say, doesn't greet me or anything. Just that's what happened. Just grab my fingers. And uh, I was like, okay, that's weird. And, you know, almost immediately starts talking like about how their son served in the military. Doesn't say anything about what happened. Starts talking about how their son served in the military. And uh, my mom is just like, she's furious at this point. And they're like taking pictures and stuff. And, uh, she goes, she was like, literally, my mom said this. She's like, I don't give a fuck. Say, like, I don't care what you guys fucking do. She's like, you better take care of him for the rest of his fucking life. And uh, like she said that. And um, I'm sitting there and he comes over to me and he leans over me. I have, a, I have a picture of this to prove it. I'll show you this picture that I have. Um, it's a pretty funny picture. Uh he leans over me and he's like this close to my face and he's like what do you want and I said, what do you want yeah he said what do you want and i said what he said what what do you want and i'm just like confused I'm, i just got blown up I just fucking saw my friends die next to me i'm like i just want to be myself and he's like huh and my mom's furious and she's like he said he just wants to be himself he just wants to be him he said, he just wants to be me. And he goes, oh, okay. And they just continue to talk about everything but what just happened. And then um, they just ushered him out of the room. He didn't know what to say. They ushered him out of the room and that was that. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.